What's up guys? Today we're working on the 383. Just pulled this out of the Suburban. Um, there's a couple issues with it. We'll go over those all in just a minute. This is probably gonna be a little different type of video than you're used to. Uh, I'm just gonna start tearing stuff apart and let you know what we see and uh, well, let's get into it. So the main issue, and there's gonna be a few more as we get go along this thing, is excessive uh, forward to back motion in the crank. So this is supposed to be about two thousandths. And as you can see, we've got quite a bit more than that. So that's causing a couple issues. So right away, uh, you can see this lobe on the crank was wearing into that piston there. Um, I think I saw one other spot, but that's at the very least causing, making this engine way less balanced than it was. Uh, and I'm sure there's gonna be other issues as we go along. And something, when you have an issue like this, the crank is toast. Um, you'll, you'll end up replacing it. So we'll take it all apart and show you guys what we see. So I'm just gonna start off taking off a few of these extra accessories like the engine mounts. And the knock sensor. And I'm gonna come back and do the oil pump. Right now I'm gonna get this gasket off here and we're gonna flip it over, take the heads off. That way we can take the pistons out and then we'll be able to pull out the crank. You wanna save this? Okay. And this is definitely gonna make a mess. So make sure you have kitty litter on deck or you can sometimes find a tray you can slide under there or like pig mats, which are oil absorbent mats which are pretty nice, but they're kind of expensive, so. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, uh, we have to pull off the rockers, pull out the push rods. We can then pull off this spider thing, and we'll take out the lifters too, since we're here and tearing it down. Then we can pull off the heads flip it back over and we'll work on the pistons and crank. Okie doke, so we're just gonna knock these out. I've got, should be two, I think, that are under tension right now. So I'll loosen up all the other ones and then crank the crank around and then uh, take those off. So just break these loose. And these are 1.2. Six ratio comp cams, rockers, typically stock, they're 1.5 ratio. 1.6 gives you a little bit more lift. Okay, so the engine's facing this way. We'll make that end of the table the front. And we're just gonna keep all of these in order. except I might've just messed that up, so maybe not. Okay, and what we're gonna do here, because these Johns will roll around all over the place and get mixed up, is I drew a bunch of circles, obviously with the front of the engine, and that way we can keep track of all of these, and I'm gonna So what I'm gonna do is just grab each one of these and make sure we keep the same order that they're in the engine block. And then to get relieve the tension off these other two, I'm just gonna rotate the engine around by the balancer, by the balancer. So what I just did is I put two of the uh, pulley bolts onto the dampener and now I can kind of crank this around. Get a little bit more leverage and help crank the engine over until those two loosen up. There we go. And now we'll pull those off. Just the 
front. Okay, and then we'll grab our last push rod. Stick that in there. And these are comp cams, seven comp cams. And these are comp cans magnum. All right, I got one more shot. <laughs> All righty. And these push rods are comp cams magnum 7608. They are 7.2 inches in length. That's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> okay, so we got our push rods taken out. Our rockers are off. Now, we should be good to pull the heads. And what I'm gonna do is um, pick one side and I'm gonna rotate the engine so that that side is flat. So we'll start on this side and uh, just rotate the engine a little bit, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Okay, so pulling off this head, what I'm gonna do is start in the center and work in a spiral outward. And I'm gonna break them all loose and then tighten them back down um, as I loosen the rest so the head doesn't warp. So we'll start right here in the middle. And tighten it back down. And come right here. And come over. This is not gonna fit here. Ooh, that's real. That's real on there. Somebody did a good job installing that. And I should note these are ARP head studs, head bolts. Um, and I can't remember. On newer vehicles, you definitely want to replace the head studs anytime you take off the heads. I think, and I'll have to double check this, you can get away with reusing these ones. So now we can take all of these out. Alrighty, so we got all these bolts loosened up. We're gonna go ahead and, oh, except for that one. Man. Almost all the bolts loosened up. Um, and these ARP studs have washers on them. So make sure to grab those as well. Ooh, and it smells real bad. Don't have to keep track of the order on these. And all of those bolts are reusable, so long as they don't have any signs of damage or corrosion. So all of those look good, and as long as we're using the same heads, we won't be replacing them. So we'll see what happens there. All right, and then we should be able to uh, lift the head off there. And we can set this to the side. So that's one side done. Let's hop over to the other side and get that done too. Now we are very carefully going to try and rotate it to the other side. And do the same thing. Grab in a trusty half inch with a breaker bar. So the plans for this engine are to supercharge it. So we'll be getting a new crank and we're gonna be keeping that with the extra stroke for the 383 and uh, supercharging it. So most likely forged rods, pistons, currently have hyper eutectic pistons and that gave us about a nine and a half to one compression which is pretty good for a daily driver. With uh, the new pistons, we're gonna try and be right at nine, maybe a little bit under for the compression ratio with the supercharger. And these heads will most likely be replaced with aluminum heads. So, and I think We've got some Scorpion 1.6 ratio rockers and uh, put a cam in this bad boy. Should be something fierce. The only thing that was stock on this block was the heads and the cam, I think. 
Easy. Oh, that doesn't look good. Now, is it possible that uh, happened after the engine was out? So now we'll straighten this back up, pull out the spider and the lifter and the lifter retainers. So this is a Vortec block and heads, which is the L31. Um, so uh, 350 Chevys are totally different throughout the year. So ours has the spider with these retaining clips and all those do is stop the lifters from rotating. And typically you would wanna keep these if you're reusing them in the same order they came out of the block. Uh, since we're gonna be using a different cam, we're gonna be using different lifters. So we can go ahead and pull these Johns out. So now I think probably the best course of action is to pull off water pump. And we're gonna keep the balancer on there for now so we can still turn the engine over. So we'll pull off this oil pump first. Oh yeah. And then this John should come off just like that. The heart of the engine right there, folks. If you wanna see us install that while the engine's in the car, you can check out our video on that right there. Now for the, <laughs> undo all the main caps, then you can pull out the crank and the pistons all as one assembly. So, no. Okay, so I've got access here to this first piston. And for this, we wanna keep the rod caps with the same rod. And we should be able to give this just a little tap. And that's gonna free up the piston and we can take off the rod cap, sure. And now what we're gonna do is slowly push the piston down really making sure not to score anything. They make a tool for this, but just so the studs don't scratch the cylinder walls, we're gonna put a piece of fuel hose over the studs and we can help guide out the piston with that. Just so you know, this is for entertainment purposes. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just very gently tap. I've got a really long extension here and I'm gonna set it on the bottom of the piston here. And I'm just gonna give that a few taps. And now we can use this rubber piece to guide the piston out and try not to scratch up the sidewalls. There we go. That was one. Cool, that was easy. And just so everything stays in the same place, we're going to put the cap back on and nuts, just a few threads on those, so those stay together. And this is the first cylinder, again, with the front of the engine facing this way. So that's gonna go like, something like that. And uh, that's the same process for the next seven. Okay, so right off the bat, we're seeing a few things. So first main concern here, is on two of the oh god two of the pistons so on this part because of the play the crank was moving you know either forward or backwards and one of the lobes was grinding on the skirt of the piston here so we have that on two of the pistons um which is not great uh rod bearings are okay um piston rings were doing a great job but Getting back to the engine, we're gonna pull off this uh, rear main seal retainer. Uh, if you wanna see how to install a rear main seal, you can check it out up here. And hindsight's 2020, I would recommend removing this before you put it on the engine stand. But it is what it is. Got the bolts taken out of this. I'm gonna see if I can take it all the way off, hopefully. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's gonna stay right there until we pull out the crank, but that should be should be fine now that it's, yeah, yep. Okay, alrighty, folks. So we got our trusty harmonic balancer puller, and we're gonna get this set up. 
and yoink off this uh, balancer right quick. Now I always try this with a ratchet first and it never seems to go well, but I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so we upgraded to a breaker bar. Okay, easy. Now we gotta pull off the timing chain cover and the timing chain. Something to note about this timing chain cover is there's no crank position sensor. Uh, because we swapped this to a uh, carburetor, we actually didn't need the crank position sensor for the ECU. Oh yeah, at least that looks good. Typically stock, this would have just a single thickness of chain. This is a double chain. Um, to take this off, we're gonna pull out these three screws. That's something interesting. The cam seems to move back and forth a substantial bit, just like the crank. Coincidence? I think not. Like so, and we can unhook it from the crank. Okie doke. So now we should be good to pull off the main caps. Okay, so these ARP studs are 11 sixteenths. And just like for the heads, I'm going to loosen them all and then tighten them back down and relieve all the pressure. And then keeping track of where they are, we're gonna pull them all off. So. Okay, easy. Alrighty, so we got all these loosened up. Let's see what we got. Take off these caps, we're just gonna give them a little tap and they should just slide right off. And not only do we wanna make sure they're in the same order, they're in the same orientation, so they're, again, the front would be this part of the table, and that's how we're gonna set them all there. Alrighty. Now, in theory, we should be able to remove the crank, um, and in our case, the main seal retainer. Um, typically, when you store a crank, you wanna store it standing upright. So we're gonna find a safe space for this and stand it up out of the way where it's not gonna get knocked over. Pick her right up like that. All right, guys. So looking at this right away, my fingers aren't catching. Ooh, that one's uh, questionable at best. Um, but if you take a look at our main caps here, that's pretty gnarly. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but if I try and run my finger across there, those are all just little scratches. So uh, we'll check out the rest of them and see, but th this crank is pretty toast. So. Um, you can see like right here along this journal where the bearing was marring against this and that's probably where the material we, we're seeing gouging the bearings is coming from. And you see some heat spots here. So, yeah, did a number on this one. Well, you guys, I think that's where we're gonna wrap it for today's video. Uh, we're going to check everything out, and when we do the second part of this, we'll get the cam out of here and uh, fill you in on everything else we found. As always, guys, if you like the video, like the video. If you want to subscribe for more, subscribe for more, and we'll catch you on the next one.